Hi, so I'm sorry but today I don't have a tutorial for you, but instead I want to tell you the story how I became a GNU Linux user. And that's also why you can see Ubuntu 12.04 running here on my screen, because that was the first Linux distribution I've ever used. So today let me tell you the story how I became a Linux user. For most of my teenage years I didn't own my own computer, but instead I could use two computers which were, which were shared along the family. And these computers had Windows XP pre-installed for most of the time. And I think, but I think only one was connected to the internet because I think they were activated with the same Windows license. And yeah, therefore that's why we only connected one to the internet. And I know one computer had store office installed of them as an office suite. The other one, which was not connected to the internet, had Microsoft Office on it. So yeah, I could use these computers to browse the internet and do the little bit of text editing and presentation creation I had to do for school back in the days, and it was quite okay. But the thing was, at some points, these computers got slower and slower, and I think the reason for this was because when you put a lot of files and programs on Windows XP, maybe even some bloatware which you accidentally downloaded and installed, the PC slowed down quite a bit. So at one point my father decided to put Linux on one of the PCs and he decided to use Ubuntu 12.04. So that was the first time I've actually used Windows, so sometimes I've used the, uh, not Windows, Linux, so sometimes I was using the Ubuntu PC, sometimes I was using the Windows PC, so I switched between them and I got to know the operating system a little bit better. But then I entered my last two years of school and here we had to write much more documents, we had to prepare much more presentations and I thought, okay, maybe now it's time for buying me an own device. And the thing is, um, I thought maybe a laptop would be better than a computer because then I can bring it to school and I don't have to rely on the USB stick because I had trouble, um, troubles when I brought my USB stick with the presentation made from Star Office or even from the older Microsoft Office version. Sometimes it wasn't displayed correctly on the school computer and when I thought when I own a laptop I can just plug it to the beamer and then I can give the presentation and everything looks like I've intended it to look like. Yep, and so I thought, okay, now I need a laptop. The thing is, I was still in school, I didn't have so much money to spend on a laptop, so I searched for a quite cheap device. And this here is what I came up with. So I bought the Asus X55U, and I think I bought this end of 2012. And in these days, netbooks were still a thing. So it, the end of netbooks, or I think, already started, but you could find a lot of computers with quite low spec hardware, but for a quite reasonable price. So let me see what I got here. So I got a 15.6 inch um, HD screen, which is nice. Um, I got four gigabytes of DDR3 SD RAM, which was also quite decent for back in the days. I got a 320 gigabyte hard drive, which is also good. But the bottleneck of this PC was the processor. So the processor in this PC was an AMD C60 processor, which is using one gigahertz, or which, which is the maximum clock. And yeah, this will become the bottleneck of this PC. And otherwise, for connections, it's also quite decent. I had a USB 2.0, USB 3.0 port, HDMI, VGA, um, microphone jack and a, an um, SSD drive and also an SD card adapter built into the laptop. So besides of the processor, it was quite a good laptop. And one important thing is this laptop came with Ubuntu 12.04 pre-installed. And I think the reason why I used it is because I already knew Ubuntu from my family computer. And I think there was also a version with Windows 7 available, but this version was more expensive. And so I went with the Ubuntu version and I think I paid 250 euros for the laptop, which was not a bad um, deal.
back in the days. Yep, and that's how I got my first laptop. It came with Ubuntu pre-installed. So I didn't have to install it myself back in the days. I think I didn't knew how to do this. So yeah, and that's basically how I start using Linux. And I also have to admit I really liked the way Ubuntu 12.04 looks. I know a lot of people who transitioned from GNOME 2 to Unity didn't really like it. But I never know GNOME 2 and I saw this interface and for me it was really cool, maybe even because it was so different from Windows. So you had your dock here where you can pin all your applications. Up here you have all your control um, and power settings. The sound mixer I also really like that you can see what song was playing here. Yes, it was your quick access to email was also great and also this start launcher was yeah was working really good for me. So I've bought this laptop and I've used it mostly for browsing the internet, watching videos on YouTube. Facebook was still a thing back then and searching the web, sometimes for school related stuff, but most of the time not for school related stuff. Um, I had LibreOffice installed here, which I could use to um, edit my documents and do some presentations. I And I also have to admit, you already had the opportunity to save the documents in the Microsoft Office um, formats. And the thing is, we were students, so even if I had to exchange a document with a friend or work on it with a friend, yes, some we didn't use so heavy formatting that it was such a big burden. So exchanging documents was also okay. It was not great, but it was okay. It was doable. Yep, and I also use LibreOffice Calc uh, Impress a lot to do the presentations and of course LibreOffice Writer to write some essays and stuff we had to write back then for school. Yeah, it was cool, it was usable and the, even this slow and low-end processor was enough back in the days for my computing reasons. The only thing which was not so good here on Linux back in the days was gaming. But there were some games available on Linux, which I also enjoyed using, and one of the games I really loved was Super Tax Card. I played it very, very often. And the cool thing was also the installation of programs was easy because we had this software center here where you can just search for applications, install it. So I think in the first three or four years when using Ubuntu, I've never touched a terminal. Okay, in the first two years, I never touched a terminal because yeah, I didn't have to install anything manually because it came pre-installed and everything was configured correctly. So I think I barely touched the terminal for anything. Okay, so back to gaming. So I think the first time I've opened the terminal was when I tried to run something with Wine, some Windows game probably. And for some games, it also works. I thought I achieved to run Age of Empires here on this laptop which also worked well. But for most of the time when I played something which wasn't a browser game, I played Super Tux Card. And for doing this video, this was a real treasure. Because on Super Tux Card, when you have want to reset your car because you've maneuvered in a hopeless situation and you want to get back on the track, you can press the delete key. But the print key, which takes a screenshot on Ubuntu 12.04, was just above the DD key and so sometimes when I'm resetting the car I hit the wrong key and I took a screenshot by accident. But this means I have some screenshots here of this laptop so let me show them to you. So here you can see a screenshot from me playing Super Tux Card. Okay I sucked quite a bit here but yeah this is how my desktop looked back in the days. So let's talk a little bit about the applications which are installed here. So most here are just the standard applications. You could also see here, I only pinned Thunderbird to it. And then here we have Riffenbox as a music player. This here is interesting because this is an Adobe Acrobat Reader version for Linux, which was available back in the days. And I didn't use it to view PDFs, but I had some PDFs I had to fill out. So this was PDF forms with editable content and I had to fill them out in the only way I got it working back in the days was by using Adobe Acrobat Reader. So that's why I have it installed here. Yep, you can see here is a terminal icon pinned to the um, dock. So I think 
this screenshot was taken when I was already in university because in my first semester we had to learn how to program in C and that was when I started using the terminal to start my compiled applications. Then this icon here is also interesting. So the source icon is the icon of the Anuta IDE, which is a C and C++ IDE and which was used to develop GNOME applications back in the days. Because everyone else at university was using Microsoft and they were using Visual Studio as their IDE, but I couldn't run Visual Studio on my PC, so I had to search for an alternative and Anuta was the one I've picked. Yep, and also a funny story. So in the first semester, we had some laboratory ex or some exercises um, in a computer lab we had to do. And the computers in this lab were running Windows, but they were old and so slow that it took 10 minutes for starting Windows and open Visual Studio. And even here on my very low powered PC, I was much more faster with Ubuntu and a user than my friends with um, Windows and Microsoft. Um, Visual Studio on the old, um, yeah, computer lab machines. Okay, and down here we have Chrono, which I sometimes used to annotate some some scripts. Yep, and this here is the SuperTox card running. And one interesting thing you can see up here is here I have a proprietary application installed. So Moneyplex was an application to, um, yeah, to get the information of all your bank accounts in one application. So it was a front end for online banking, but you don't didn't have to log into the bank websites. And it also had a Linux version back in the days, which was also quite cool. Yep, so I was using Ubuntu, I was quite happy with it, but I noticed my laptop was or was also quite slow. So I think beginning of the third semester, I started um, or I did the first upgrade on my system, which was replacing the hard drive with an SSD. And I don't know exactly the reason why, but after having a free SSD, I had to install Linux by myself. That was the first time I've installed Linux. And for some reasons, I decided to not use Ubuntu, but install Linux Mint instead. I thought the reason was a professor of mine used Linux Mint. I also find it quite cool, so I give it a shot and install it here on the SSD. So yeah, this is um, Win, um, Linux Mint running on my first laptop. And you can see I've tweaked it a little bit. So here I've installed the ambience theme from Ubuntu. So basically this window theme here. And this wasn't the default uh, theme on Linux Mint, but as I really liked it, I tried to install it here and I um, succeeded somehow because yeah here I'm using the same window theme and the second thing I did which is not so spectacular okay I've exchanged the Linux Mint logo for the Ubuntu logo for some reason but I think it's okay Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu so it's okay to do so and you can also see the version of SuperTux card is much more reason than the one here on Ubuntu because that was, for, I don't know if I upgraded ever to Ubuntu 30.04 or if I just kept using Ubuntu 12.04. I'm not 100% sure about that. Yeah, so that's basically how I became a Linux user. Before going to university, I barely ever touched the terminal, even back then. But I think the reason why I had such a smooth transition or such a smooth Linux experience was because the laptop came pre-installed with Ubuntu for cost reasons. Okay, yeah, so that, that's how I started to use Linux and how I became a Linux user. If you enjoyed content like this, which is a little bit more personal and a little bit of my history and background with Linux, please let me know in the comments. I can do more videos about this. I'm thinking of one video where I can show you how I realized that the terminal can be helpful for the first time, which is maybe also interesting for you. Yeah, so let me know in the comments what you think. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you want to support my work, you can buy my coffee on buymycoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.